welcome back. It is February 20th, 2021, and we are continuing our series, The Stories Jesus Told. And today's story is entitled, It's Party Time. And our scripture is Luke 15, 7. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, as we look at the stories that you told of the lost sheep, coin, and son, help us to realize our true condition and where we would be if you did not go searching for us. Thank you that you did. Help us to realize, acknowledge, embrace, and be thankful for that truth. And may it change us and transform us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Here is the very short list of scriptures that we will cover today. And as always, I encourage you to go to the PDF version of this sermon for the notes. It's party time. Tax collectors and other sinners wanted to be around Jesus and listen to what he had to say. Pharisees and teachers of the law also gathered around Jesus, but for a very different reason. He was dangerous. On one particular occasion, Jesus, tax collectors, other run-of-the-mill sinners, and the religious elite were all together in one place, and the elites began to complain. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. I mean seriously. Any good, self-respecting church leader would never be caught dead with that particular class of people. The righteous and sinners simply never mingle. Jesus, on the other hand, never seemed to mind In fact, hanging out with sinners rather than saints was exactly what he wanted to do. And now was the perfect time to tell a few stories. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and you lose one of them. Don't you leave the 99 and go after the lost sheep until you find it? And when you find it, don't you joyfully put the sheep on your shoulders and go home and call all your neighbors and invite them to a party because you found that one lost sheep? It's like that in heaven. And there is more rejoicing over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who don't need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and she loses one. Doesn't she search the house carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, doesn't she call her friends and neighbors and invite them to a party because the lost has been found? It's like that in heaven. There is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Jesus continued, a man had two sons. The younger son asked for his inheritance and not long after he put everything he had in a suitcase, moved to a distant country and proceeded to spend all of his inheritance on wild living. He spent every last dime and then a severe drought came to the country. The young man was in trouble. He was forced to get a job looking after pigs. 
He was hungry all the time, and the food the pigs were eating began to look good. But no one was willing to help him. One day, he finally came to his senses. How many of my father's employees have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I'm going home. It's time to admit that I have sinned, and I realize that I am not worthy to be called his son, but maybe he'll agree to take me on as an employee. So the young man got up and started the long journey home. He was still a long way off, but his father, pacing at the end of the driveway, saw him and was filled with compassion. He hiked up his robes and ran toward his son and wrapped his arms around him in a long embrace. Father, the son said, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am not worthy to be called your son. But his father didn't let him finish. Turning to his servant, the father said, quick, bring the best robe I have and put it on him and bring my signet ring and some sandals as well. Prepare the best veal because I am throwing a party. My son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Party time! Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came home, he heard music and dancing. He asked one of the servants what was going on and was told a party was being given for the brother who had returned home. This news angered him, and he refused to join in the celebration. His father even went out to try to convince him to come in, but he answered his father, All these years I have been slaving away for you. I have never disobeyed you, and yet you never threw me a party. But when your son, the one who threw away your money on prostitutes, comes home, you throw him a party. My son, replied the father, you are my devoted son, and everything I own belongs to you. And we had to celebrate because your brother, who was dead, is alive again. He was lost and is found. I'm going to tell you something about my mother. She is directionally challenged. There is no shame in it. Lots of people are. As a small child, I would sit on the armrest of the front seat of our car because you didn't have to have a car seat. Nobody wore a seat belt, so I sat on the, the armrest. And I would give her directions. Go up to the light, turn left. The first major argument that my husband and I got into was over the necessity of using a map. He was in the yes camp, and I was in the no camp. I'm pretty good at finding my way around, and I rarely consider myself lost. I'm just not exactly where I want to be. These stories, however, are not about being physically lost. They're about being spiritually lost. So how does a person get spiritually lost. Stubbornness, pride, rebellion, detours and shortcuts, laziness, spiritual ADHD, comfort at the expense of obedience, resistance to surrender, and the relinquishing of control. 
wounds inflicted by other people. Some, like the lost sheep, know that they are lost, but they don't know how to find their way home. The detours and shortcuts have not worked. They're helpless and they know it and they will remain lost until someone comes looking for them. And that's what Jesus does. And he doesn't stop until he has found them. Some, like the lost coin, don't know they're lost, but they're just as lost as the lost sheep. How can that be? It's possible to be lost sitting in a pew. It's possible to love churchy things but not love God. It's possible to be self-righteous but to not actually be righteous. It's possible to be lost and not even know it. And we'll come back to this in just a couple of moments. If a person is oblivious to their lostness, how are they supposed to get found? Someone has to go in search of them, and that's what Jesus does, and he doesn't stop searching for them until he finds them. Some, like the lost son, get intentionally lost. They have experienced the love of the Father, but now they want to take a different path. They like the freedom of the road. Don't tell me what to do. Jesus doesn't go in search of them. He allows them their choice. But every day, he goes out to the end of the driveway, scanning the horizon, hoping that today will be the day they choose to come home. Finding a lost person is only a part of the process. I don't know if you've ever heard this story the man is in a flood and he's sitting on the top of his house and he pleads to God to rescue him. Please, Lord, rescue me. And then a boat comes by. But the man doesn't get in the boat because he's waiting for God to rescue him. And then a helicopter hovers over him, but he doesn't get in the basket that's offered because he's waiting for God to rescue him. Finding a lost person is only a part of the process. The lost sheep knows that he's lost. What he has to admit is that he ne needs help to become unlost. And according to our story, that requires repentance. The lost sheep always has the choice of refusing the help of the rescue party. Nah, thanks, I'm fine. I can find my own way home. However, if he does that, he will remain lost. The lost coin doesn't know that he's lost. For all he knows, he's on the scenic byway of life and does not realize that there's a cliff at the end of the road. In order for the rescuer to help the lost coin, he has to admit that he's lost. And according to our story, that requires repentance. The lost coin always has the choice of not admitting that he's lost. Thanks, I'm fine, I'm not lost, I'm not, I'm just not exactly where I want to be, yet. However, if he does that, if he rejects 
the rescuer, he will remain lost and will eventually come to the cliff at the end of the road. The lost son, he got lost on purpose. He intentionally took the road that looked easy and smooth, but it has not turned out as he had planned. And as he looks back, he sees all the potholes and danger signs that he has chosen to ignore. If he is going to be rescued, he's going to have to go back the way that he came. In order to do that, he will have to admit that he is responsible for the situation that he finds himself in. And that requires repentance. The lost son always has the choice to ignore his lostness and press on. Thanks, I'm fine. If I can just get to the smooth road ahead, things will work out. However, if he does that, he will remain lost on the road that he has chosen. Rescue begins with repentance. John Eldridge in his book, Epic, says this, the challenge God faces is rescuing people who have no idea how captive they are, no real sense of how desperate they are. In order for the rescuer to help, you have to admit you're lost. And when Jesus brings that lost sheep home, there's a party. And when Jesus finds that lost coin, there's a party. And when that lost son finally comes home, Jesus hikes up his robes and runs to meet him. It doesn't matter what he's done. He's home. And there's a party. But that's not the end of this story. There's the lost brother. Yes, he didn't run away from home, but he's nonetheless lost. Listen to these words from Casting Crowns from their song, Start Right Here. I'm like the brother of the prodigal who turned his nose and puffed his chest. He didn't run off like his brother, but his soul was just as dead. The fact is, you don't have to run away to be lost. You don't have to cause a scandal to be in rebellion. The older brother served the father, but not because he loved the father. He might have actually looked on with envy as the younger brother did what he had always wanted to do. But no. He stayed home out of a sense of duty and the belief that the father would owe him for being the good son. The problem here is motivation. It's not that the older brother stayed home and didn't get in trouble. It's why he stayed home. Just like the laborers who worked all day from our story last week, he believed his good works entitled him to his father's estate. The father would owe him for all of his years of service. So when the younger brother came home and the father threw a party for him, the motivation of the older brother was on full display. And it was not a good look. What is your motivation for serving God? Reward or love? Obligation 
or gratitude? Do you rejoice when a lost sheep, coin, or son is rescued? Or are you jealous because they will receive the same reward that you have been working so hard to buy? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace that you are saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. And that brings us to the three most important characters, the shepherd, the woman, and the father. The level of passion when searching for the lost sheep and the lost coin. The level of passion as the father paced back and forth at the end of the drive every day looking for his son Love like that, passion like that, is at the heart of the gospel. It's why God sent his son. 1 John 4, starting with verse 9. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for sin. God loves lost people. Maybe you're a lost sheep. Maybe you're a lost coin. Maybe you're a lost son. It doesn't matter. He is so excited that you have found, that you have been found that he doesn't even care how you got lost. Rejoice with me, he says. My sheep, my coin, my son was lost, but now they are found. Party time! Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for these stories that you go in search of us, that you pace at the end of the drive waiting for us to come back home. And that when we do, when we are found, you don't grill us about how we got lost. You just throw a party. Thank you for that, dear Jesus. Thank you for that. May we rejoice when other lost sheep, other lost coins, other lost sons come home again. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everybody. That's it for this week. We'll see you next time. Bye.